basically this study is about looking at people with language impairment after stroke. Um, typically what happens with these types of studies is that they're usually quite small scale, um, usually looking at a single type of language impairment. Um, and what we did was a, what's known as an individual participant data meta-analysis, where we gathered data from a range of different data sets worldwide that looked at different elements of language as well. So we looked at, you know, spoken language, we looked at auditory comprehension, we looked at, you know, word finding and naming as well as functional communication. So the benefit of this was that we were taking a much more broad overview of language impairment after stroke. And we were looking at a range of different elements of language as well. So what we did was we looked at, um, uh, we collated 174 different data sets related to post-stroke aphasia that represented um, 28 different countries worldwide. And uh, what we wanted to do was to see if we could look at the natural history of language recovery. We also wanted to look at the individual predictors of a uh, outcome following language uh, for fo following a uh, stroke, essentially. So what we found was that across the board for a range of different language impairments, that includes overall severity of language impairment, your auditory comprehension, your naming and your functional communication. Um, Earlier enrolment into research studies conferred a much better chance of having a, a greater language gain. But that's not to say that if you were enrolled in a research study when you had a chronic um, stroke or chronic aphasia, that you didn't make gains, you just didn't make as much gains. But the, the key thing is we also saw gains in this um, later population as well. Um, also across the board, what we found was that younger people did a lot better than older people. But again, it's not to say that older people didn't make language gains, they did. So this has really good clinical implications because it means that even though a therapist sees somebody who is slightly more elderly um, and uh, they have doubts about whether therapy is going to improve their language, what we showed is yes, it does improve. It doesn't improve to a wider you know, margin as we saw in the younger people, but it does still improve uh, nevertheless. It is what we expected to see because we see examples in other types of stroke research where we see earlier intervention is better, younger people doing much better as well. And we also saw a, a couple, for a couple of the domains, we saw sex differences as well where women did better than men. Now that needs explored a little bit further because that is something that we see in some data sets but not in others. In our IPD meta-analysis, we saw it for... Um, overall language severity scores and we saw it for functional communication but we didn't see it for auditory comprehension or naming ability so it's one of these things that we we just need to have a look a little bit further possibly in a little bit more detail to see what other factors might be at play there as well as i said before it is really important for clinicians when they see the participant in front of them um, it, to know that um, even if somebody is in a chronic state, so if they've had aphasia for more than six months, if they have you know, had aphasia for more than a year, most people think, okay, well, they've made as, as much recovery as they're going to make and you know it's going to be plateaued and that's about as much as we can expect from them but what we've shown is actually therapy works in these participants as well it's not going to be a huge gain uh, like you'd see in the acute phase but you still see quite a bit of gain and that's something to be uh, shared with participants as well because any little communication gain will make a really big difference for their own lives